Welcome back to our discussion of Saturn. What I'm about to present to you are some of the physics explaining why the rings exist. Now, I'm assuming you're already familiar with the concept of satellite speed and how objects are able to remain in orbit above a planet by moving sideways really fast. A key concept for us here is that the closer the satellite, the greater the force of gravity. This means that in order to remain in orbit, the object needs to be moving sideways that much faster. In short, closer objects need to orbit faster in order to remain in orbit. And we see this with the orbital speeds of the planets around the sun. Notice how the inner moon shown here, Prometheus, travels faster. It has to, because Saturn's force of gravity on it is greater. Which is to say, if Prometheus traveled any slower, it would fall into the planet, not around it. What would happen if we tied a string between these two moons? The string would break, wouldn't it? With any moon, including our own, the side nearest the planet needs to travel faster than the farther side. The result is a stretching effect, or as it's often called, a tidal force. Get close to a big planet, like Jupiter or Saturn, and this stretching effect gets most significant, resulting in much inner turmoil. As the moon is being pulled apart, the resulting friction heats it up. As we discussed in the Jupiter video lesson, that's how the insides of Io, Europa, and Ganymede are warmed. Now, there can come a point when the moon, if too close, the moon can potentially rip apart. Or think of it in the reverse. The moon may never even form. What you get instead of a moon is a ring, or in the case of Saturn, a series of rings. I'm simplifying things a bit here, but that's the general idea. Differences in gravitational pull from Saturn prevent all the stuff of the rings from ever coalescing into a moon or a series of moons. Think of it this way. The inner parts of the ring are always traveling faster. And you can't form a moon if all the bits of the moon keep moving away from each other. However, you know, a strong force of gravity between those bits could overcome this effect, couldn't it? Gravity would be the glue, and that's what usually happens. But guess what the rings of Saturn are made of? Ice. That's H2O. Water ice. And ice, compared to rock, is not very dense. Not enough gravity to pull together. So, we have rings. Shiny rings made of ice, about 93% ice. Now, whether they formed during the beginning of our solar system or within the more recent past from some major cataclysmic impact is not yet known. What we do know is that these rings are beautiful, iconic, really, representing an otherworldliness so easily associated with astronomy. Okay, so you also want to know how the different rings are named? Well, Creatively, astronomers name them by the letters of the alphabet. So you might think the A ring is closest to Saturn? Nope. They're named in order of their discovery, where the A ring was discovered first, the B ring discovered second, and so forth. The A, B, and C rings are the major rings. The D rings are uh, the innermost, also quite faint. The E ring is easy to remember because it's caused by Enceladus. The F ring is that ring bound between Pandora and Prometheus. The G ring? Uh, ah, heck, it's right here. <laughs> Whatever. I'm hoping you're not needing to memorize the letters of these rings. Unless, of course, you decide to become an astronomer, in which case you'd need to know the names in order to communicate with your fellow astronomers. But if you don't plan on becoming an astronomer, please don't waste your time memorizing this nomenclature, okay? Far more interesting is this. There's still much we don't know. <laughs> Memorize that. The exact dynamics of the rings are complex, and there's still much to figure out. And the Cassini itself was limited in its ability to probe. What would a super close-up image of the rings reveal? Hey, 
Here's an artist's depiction based upon some sound theories. Ice chunks, no more than a meter across, migrate between clumps. We do know the rings are very thin, like only about 20 meters thick. Twice every Saturian year, the rings face Earth at a zero angle, which means they disappear from our view. We see the rings best when they're tilted downward or upward relative to us. Great viewing. Get out your telescopes. And good science to you.